Hello, uh, good morning or good evening, depending on what part of the world you're joining us from. Uh, my name is Krishna and uh, I'm, I'm very excited to be here speaking with all of you on uh, this webinar um, yeah, by Ajivetta on supporting innovation with Agile. Right? Um, and I'm assuming that you know most of you uh, who've joined us uh, for this session uh, today are here because you know you either have strong interests in agile or innovation or both and that is great news so without further ado uh, I'm gonna get started uh, really quick and uh, do a quick introduction about myself uh, following which we can dive straight into the subject right so my name is uh, Krishna I'm a you know very passionate agile coach and a practicing you know a software engineering director uh, for a company so I've done you know quite a few agile certifications and trainings as you can see uh, I'm a you know scaled agile program consultant I'm a certified scrum professional uh, CSPO CSM etc uh, I've had a total of about you know 17 years of experience uh, in IT. Uh, let me see if I can minimize this. All right, so I'm going to hide the panel. Okay, so I've had I've, I've, I have a total of about 17 years of experience in IT, working in di in different capacities as a you know, project program manager uh, or a portfolio manager, software engineering director, um, or what have you. And I've had the opportunity of working both in India, US, UK uh, for top-notch top IT firms shipping world-class enterprise software, right? Um, I've, you know, and, you know, I've dealt with projects of, from small to medium to large size, which are multi-year, multi-million dollar uh, kind of you know uh, software project sizes. Um, I've also from time to time had uh, given my passion being a facilitator for uh, you know teams for leaders in the organization in designing programs to you know typically try to make good organizations great to increase the ag organization's agility or basically manage changes. So this is uh, a little bit about what I do. Um, and what my background has been. Um, I've also had the opportunity uh, to host several technology conferences, um, and, and I'm a you know co-founder and a member of a few agile uh, consulting organizations as well. Right. So that's that. So the agenda for today is to talk about you know innovation and agile and how how agile supports innovation. So. Um, the three broad areas that we plan to cover today are obviously uh, innovation and the Agile Manifesto. How they, you know, does the Agile Manifesto even talk about innovation? So that's the first thing that we will talk about. We'll talk about embracing and managing the changing requirements, which is pretty much the need of the hour uh, in the world and in the space that we operate. Um, We'll then talk about you know how continuous improvement is is something that's innate. It's you know it's second nature to agile. It doesn't have to be you know done after. It's built into agile. So we'll spend a little bit of time uh, you know, going over that, right? So to start with, I mean I'd start with you know talking about innovation and where does this word of innovation comes from? Um, innovation comes from Latin and uh, from is derived from the word innovare. Innovare basically means to renew or to change, right? Um, and now let's see what agile is and where that word comes from. You know, agile is, you know, pretty much if you look up any of the, uh, you know, uh, books or articles on agile, agile in a nutshell is your ability to embrace the change quickly and easily, right? So if you, if you basically, uh, you know, look at both of these in, in conjunction, simply put, you will only innovate if you don't settle for the status quo, right? If you settle for status quo, if you settle for the things, uh, you know, and the way they are, then you will never feel the urge and need to innovate 
and maybe somebody else will innovate and that somebody else could be your peer, your competitor, you know, in either a different team, a competitor in a competitor environment out in the market and they will obviously succeed. They will take the lead ahead of you. And, you know, at this stage I have a number of examples and I'm sure most of you already know, uh, you know, these, these examples. Uh, but just to put things into perspective, the companies that have basically innovated from time to time have outlived other companies that are no longer existing or are almost close to bankruptcy. You know, examples like Netflix and Blockbuster. Netflix as a company, you know, uh, or Blockbuster as a company was a household name in the US. Uh, they ship DVDs from, you know, from person A to person B, whoever needed those DVDs, those DVDs got shipped to customers. They did not adapt. They did not basically ever imagine that, the, in, that they could leverage internet um, or that there could be another competitor who would leverage internet and high bandwidth, which was very pervasive in the US. That Netflix came with that. Netflix started to do live streaming and started to have titles and movies and shows available online, uh, completely ripping apart the business that Blockbuster had, which was shipping DVDs. Right, so that's one example, solid example, where Blockbuster did not keep up with the changes in the internet and the you know high bandwidth and uh, the streaming technology. Right, so that's one example. Other examples, Nokia and Apple. Right, at one stage in the late 90s, Nokia was pretty much ruling the handset market. Right, they did not basically innovate or they did not come to the market in time uh, and smartphones, the whole concept of smartphones started getting introduced with Apple and Apple basically became the most lovable product that you know people wanted to get their hands on. So you know and Nokia very soon were you know they were just being used. Nokia handsets were being teased as paperweights, right? I mean nobody else would use Nokia handsets after you know the apples and the samsungs and you know samsung caught on and other other competitors quickly caught on and the smartphone you know market basically exploded if you will right other examples to basically you know uh, to provide more relevance to today is you know how how fast you know companies are basically scaling up and creating more jobs uh, you know because because of innovation um, you know, they can be examples quoted all the way from, you know, the way cars were manufactured back in the 70s and the 18s to all the way till now where there's, you know, almost talk about self-driven cars by Tesla and Google. And what has made this path possible? Agility and innovation, right? Your desire to challenge status quo and do something better. Uh, and unless you had the urge to innovate, unless you were welcoming the changes in technology and the changes in market requirements, you would have never gotten to, you know, self-driven cars for that matter that Uber, Tesla and Google are basically vying for today, right? Uh, you know, on a very relevant note today, I mean, you know, we've seen that there are a number of jobs that are being cut and downsized. There are layoffs happening in you know a lot a lot of services companies. And if you've seen, if any of you have seen, uh, you know, the the Twitter you know that's doing the rounds where Bill Gates Twitter handle, he's very clearly said the reason why a lot of employees are losing their jobs are because they're not able to keep up with the changes in technology and you know they're not upgrading themselves with whatever is the latest offering out in the market so his his suggestion if any of you have read the article or read the twitter handles and uh, the other interviews is he's now talking about artificial intelligence machine learning you know chatbots and and you know areas like those um, are where he suggested the future is and we could lay focus on. So rather than you know continuing to uh, 
uh, stick to our old technologies that we are all familiar with, right? Now that said, you know, let's talk about embracing and managing changing requirements. So, like I said, I I thought I I drove the point home to say that innovation is nothing but challenging status quo and getting to a better state, um, and that is that can only be achieved through uh, you know um, through an agile mindset. Now. Uh, embracing and managing changing requirements. This is something that we see day in and day out. Let's talk about embracing change from an agile manager standpoint. Agile teams manager, you know, if you're an agile teams manager, you have to innovate, you have to have innovative techniques to improve quality, improve employee morale, of course, you know, resulting in better productivity. Right? Let's look at this from a from a you know um, entrepreneur standpoint, and the entrepreneur is you know you know um, expectation you know by it would be to go to the market faster. You know, faster time to market is what you know an entrepreneur would want to achieve by embracing and managing a change in requirements. Now, how can innovative teams help achieve you know a better business results and manage changing requirements? You know. Only if you innovate will you be able to come up with best tools and techniques and the best methods to innovate and to basically, you know, do the same things with faster speed and greater greater productivity. Right? So those are three perspectives depending on what part of the business you represent. Right? Now with that said, you know, let's talk about embracing and managing change you know to or take let's take that all the way to the next level what does that talk about that talks about what do I get if I embrace and manage change now I'm gonna quote an example of you know companies like Amazon and Netflix here right now why why do we think that Amazon is so very successful it's obviously not producing a lot of products but it's basically enabling you know the whole supply chain uh, you know um, space it's basically using software to basically you know bring a whole new retail experience to lots of its consumers now amazon has been able to do this because of their really really robust software engineering practices and you know some of you may already know this you know, and if you want to take a guess, take a guess. Uh, uh, you know, take a guess about the amount of time or the time between any two releases of Amazon, right? How much time is Amazon taking to release, you know, a new feature into the market, right? And you'll be surprised. I think you know, last year it was about 11.5 seconds for every new feature to get into the market and this year uh, Amazon has been able to you know get even better they're able to release a new feature into the market or have a new release into the market every 10.2 seconds now this is just Amazon you know you talk about the stories of Salesforce or Netflix you know how fast have they been able to you know come up with new releases they have all of these companies like you know uh, Salesforce or Netflix or Amazon. They not not only have you know features that are basically being built over a you know month or two month size cycle. They have a pipeline of features that are waiting for the right market conditions so that they can go to the market. So they are ahead of the market uh, in some sense. Uh, you know, and how are they able to achieve that? They're able to achieve that by being agile, by increasing their software, you know, uh, de you know, software development practices, especially in the areas of, you know, software test automation, as well as having very robust DevOps practices, right? Had they continued to do software development like they used to do in the old waterfall days, they would have never gotten this far. Now, what you see on the screen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, are a few results of companies that are basically taking agility to the next level. These are companies that are doing scaled agile, right? And you know, this is a perfect answer to somebody asking, you know, why should I change the way I do software development? You know, 
So the the answers are right here. This this is this is what you see on the screen are results of case studies or you know pure data, pure statistics of case studies submitted by companies like Cisco, Amdocs, Intel, Philips, United Health Group, Woolworth, Deutsche Borsa. You know, all of these are CA technologies. These are real companies. Uh, and these companies are saying that, you know, you know we've, we've adopted newer ways of, you know, basically uh, improving our agility. And these are the businesses that we are seeing, right? You know, which is happier and motivated employees. You know, you, we have 50% less defects. We have greater quality. We have 20 to 50% improvement in productivity. We can go to the market 30 to 75% times faster. Now, who on earth would not want to achieve these kind of results, right? Every, every, every company, be it a startup to a really large, super large enterprise software company, you know, they would all want to achieve, you know, uh, results like these. Um, and these results are only achievable if you have, if you demonstrate the level of agility uh, that you should, right? Now, let's go back. Let's take, you know, let's go back a few years when, uh, when the Agile Manifesto came into play, right? Agile Manifesto, as most of you may already know, came into, you know, came into being back in 2001 where a bunch of you know software enthusiasts wrote up the agile manifesto uh, in salt lake city in utah now as you will notice even about 16 years ago when the agile manifesto was written it had the mention of you know innovation it had the or the agile principles had mention of innovation basically tied to agility now if you look at you know the fourth uh, you know, value in the Agile Manifesto. It talks about responding to change over following a plan. Be agile so that you know we can you know do creative software development and achieve you know greater productivity, greater quality, faster time to market. If you, you know, if you look at the principles behind the Agile Manifesto uh, that you know that you may also be familiar with. If you look at principle number two, it points out to uh, it, it points out to you know your ability to welcome changing requirements even late in development um, and the agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage right so what we, what we mean by this is unless you basically welcome changes and you harbor an environment which which is welcoming changes constantly you know that is what will basically give you and the customer that you're working for a competitive advantage over the others for example you know today there are the flip cards and the amazons of the world right um you know the and and say for instance if somebody and you must have seen this happening already if somebody comes up with a feature that says you know if you use uh, the rupee credit rupee card for that matter you will get a 15% cash back if somebody says that and if you know if uh, somebody is promoting rupee um, or, or if they say you know beat rupee and visa you will get a 15% cash back if one of these players e-commerce players is doing it and the other player does not do it in time uh, then then and if they continue to follow a plan which says okay we're gonna have more products added if Am Amazon already has this feature that says we will give a cash back to anybody that uses a Visa credit card or a Rupe card and you know can Flipkart continue to ignore that and say you know what we don't care about you know such such a uh, you know um, a promotion we will just continue to add more and more products you know uh, into our catalog of offerings and we don't care about these you know whatever discount days and stuff like that it doesn't work that way right if you are somebody who's who's doing software development for flipkart uh, you know then you can't obviously crib and say hey you know what you wanted me to work on the fashion accessories catalog uh, now all of a sudden you're saying that we need to change our priorities 
and work on basically these discounts feature uh, that if somebody uses a certain credit card, I need to provide them a certain discount. Now, we can't be cribbing about it. Why? Because, you know, or as a supplier or a software developer, we shouldn't be cribbing about it because <clears throat> what's of paramount importance is what's important to the business. Now, you've got to be aware of your competitor space and you've got to be agile. And that's when you can basically, you know, help, your, help yourself, help your customer, and hence, you know, uh, better business results for the customer. The other agile principle that I made a mention of, uh, you know, being adaptive or being agile to support innovation is principle number 12. What does this talk about? It says, at regular intervals, the teams have to reflect on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. Right? So what this is talking about is your, your uh, you know, your practices to inspect and adapt from time to time to become an even better organization. Now, we have several opportunities to do inspection and adaptation. Uh, and that's, you know, basically trial and error, you know, basically you do iterative development in, you know, stop at certain period amounts of time, be, be it during your peer reviews, print reviews, what have you, any of the feedback loops that you introduce so that you basically, you know, get quicker feedback, faster feedback, and you can improve the way you, you're doing software development. And, you know, ultimately your end product will be much closer to what's desired, right? Now, now let's, let's also, you know, throw some light on why we, there's so much emphasis on agility and what's wrong with the, the existing methods. So somebody in the group might argue and say, you know what, you know, we're following a plan-driven approach, which is waterfall. So what's wrong with that? You know, help us understand that. Now, you know, let's look at the different stages. Uh, so firstly, as you're doing your requirements definition, a conventional method would basically, you know, do detailed requirements or they would do detailed upfront uh, or, you know, upfront planning prior to the starting of any development activities. Now, some of these requirements that you get into details for, you may not even touch those requirements because, you know, those requirements change as you make, keep making progress in the project because market conditions are dynamic, technology is changing, your competitor space is changing. Depending on that, your requirements may also change. So why get into details about something? That's number one. If you look at, you know, and what does, you know, how does Agile, how is Agile better in that regard? You know, Agile, we only, you know, focus on high-level product backlog up front, right? We don't do detailed planning as you begin the project. Similarly, the planning approach in, uh, you know, the traditional methods, you have a, you know, you have your work breakdown structures and basically hourly, you know, estimates in hours and all of that, you know, detailed, uh, you know, that you get into. As opposed to that, in Agile, you don't do a very detailed planning uh, with detailed hourly estimates. You basically you know, plan at a high level. You do something called release planning, where you where you basically do your mid-range planning for the next you know four to five to six sprints at the max. Right? It helps you understand the big picture before you get started, rather than getting into a lot of detail. Right. Now, scope control, right, so they, I mean, the conventional projects tightly control scope and for every time you, you need to introduce a change, there's a change request and there's a lot of bureaucracy around it and there's a change control board who controls it. Customers, you know, if you go and ask any customer, you know, off the, off the street, you will, you will know all customers hate change control boards and going through a lot of bureaucracy and red tape for introducing a change that they are willing to pay for, right? And they would expect a certain amount of flexibility from the supplier organization, um, and which is why Agile basically says that you know, we will embrace change at any given stage of the project, right? And scope is, you know, scope changes are expected, and we welcome, you know, any changes that are, uh, you know, requested can be adopted at any sprint boundary, right? Once we are done with the sprint, the next every two weeks, uh, if that's the iteration length, typically, 
uh, we are okay to basically pick up any new set of requirements, right, that the customer wants. Because, you know, we can't be saying that, hey, you know what, we signed up for this scope and we will only deliver that. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't get the customer the, you know, the competitive advantage because, you know, because of all the changes that are going on, right? And a plan-driven approach or a conventional method would only emphasize on controlling costs and schedules and keeping them watertight. All right, and whereas agile, you know, ha you basically turn the whole, you basically completely change the game and say that, you know, the emphasis is on being flexible for and adopt embracing changes to scope um, to satisfy whatever the business wants, uh, you know, right? So that way you say, you know, the cost per sprint is pretty much fixed. How and however you can change anything that you want us to do in any sprint at the beginning of the sprint and we'll do it, right? So that's to throw some light around the different facets of, uh, you know, how, you know, initiatives uh, are driven both in conventional and uh, agile methods. So moving on, so this, what you see on the screen is, uh, you know, uh, is, is kind of the summary of agile slash scrum methodology, right? Now, what do we see here and where are areas where we could basically be, uh, you know, how, how do we do continuous improvement? How, do, how is continuous improvement as a process built into Agile? So let's throw some light on that. Now, number one, you're up now, you, number one, you have your opportunity to change your requirements in your product backlog itself. Now, that is your opportunity to change the the deliverables in the product backlog itself you know that could be your and this is a constantly your product backlog by the way ladies and gentlemen is a constantly changing beast you could be changing you could be prioritizing ranking adding deleting items in the backlog you this is the constantly changing dynamic beast uh, in an agile environment and the product owner is, is the one who's who owns the backlog he would change, he would introduce changes that make most business sense at any given point in time. That's Right, and so you know that's where the product owner gets gets an it, the sprint planning is another opportunity where the product owner can you know shift priorities up or down, and now you know that's how you're continuously improving. Why would the product owner change priorities? Because you know sometimes somebody might estimate and say, hey, you know what, you want us to work on this this specific requirement. However, this is going to take us two months to do. Would you want us to do this, or would you rather want us to do another one, which would you know give us pretty much the same functionality? Uh, if some, if a, if the team is supposed to build a login page, and there is a Facebook integration and a LinkedIn integration, and if the team says, hey, you know what, the Facebook integration is going to take us a while because there's a lot of security that testing that we need to do. However, LinkedIn is relatively secure. We can do this in the next like five, four days. Which one would you rather have us do? So that that could influence which one you're doing one over the other or which one you're doing first um, versus the other, etc. Right? You also, every day during your daily stand-up, that's your fantastic opportunity to inspect and adapt. Right, so based on the updates that are, you know, based on the sync up meeting, you know, that everybody is, you know, coming to, and whatever you know, daily updates they share, you could basically, you know, make changes, uh, you know, depending on if you think something is going as per the, you know, as as per the expected business value to be delivered or not. Similarly, you know, you you have your sprint review, which is also another fantastic feedback loop. Uh, you know where you will get the opportunity to hear directly from the customer or the customer representative, which is a product owner. Where you know you would need to figure out if the if if what you delivered is what was expected by the business or the business representative, and you can make changes accordingly. 
So as you can see, the items that I've, that I've marked in one, two, three, and four are all areas, are all opportunities to introduce a change, or uh, they're all feedback loops uh, based on which you can basically change the way uh, you have uh, you know, you have basically planned for your sprint or you have planned for your deliverables or outcomes, right? So we need to leverage each of these feedback loops to ensure that we are able to continuously improve and deliver exactly what's close to what the business wants. And that's um, that step. Now, embracing and managing changing requirements. Now, let's look at the how part, right? So we spoke about this. We spoke about your ability to trade off requirements one with the others. Now, A, if, there's, if this is your huge backlog, you will always have the opportunity to reprioritize items. When I say you, it is a product owner who will determine you know, if something needs to be done sooner rather than later. And basically, he will have to you know, shift. He could swap. Now, now you could also insert a new item into your product backlog uh, you know and the order in which they appear top to bottom is the order in which they get implemented now you could introduce a new item here at the same time you need to trade off and say you know what because i introduced something new in this specific sprint i may have to you know compromise or i may have to basically you know uh, descope something from this sprint scope that's always a possibility right you would you would also have the opportunity to basically you know refine requirements that are unclear that are that do not have a solid definition of done um, either. So why why are we doing all of this? Basically reprioritizing, inserting new items. Inserting new items is obviously because you learn something new either the in the market space, either in the competitor space, or either you know something that you that you that was an afterthought. And so you're introducing a new item. Why are we reprioritizing something? Because you know we thought, you know, after giving considerable amount of thought, this item here was deemed to be higher priority than the other item. Maybe the team's estimates could have influenced it. Maybe we force we there was a risk uh, that we needed to reduce by taking up this new item, uh, prioritizing that item. Maybe there was a new opportunity. Who knows? Maybe there was something else that was time critical because of which you will need to reprioritize them. And you need to have that flexibility to reprioritize and play around with your backlog. It may also be that you will need to completely get rid of a backlog item because that does not make business sense anymore. Right? So say you mean so there could be you know several examples that could be coded uh, for basically completely for something that's deemed as completely irrelevant, you should basically knock it off. Right? So that's that. Now, that's that. Now, while these are opportunities for you to embrace change, uh, you know, one, two, three, and four, those are feedback loops and opportunities. How can you make innovation a habit in your agile software development? Now, there are, a, you know, several organizations have introduced several ceremonies through which, you know, changes can be introduced a culture of innovation can be built into the organization you know while staying agile now how do we do that some organizations say that you know there has to be some time set aside for innovation and planning some teams even do innovation and planning as a completely uh, you know a separate sprint at the end of feature development Right? We're not saying that you know we we get, we jump to basically asking our leadership to do that right away. <laughs> we all know what's going to happen if we say we need a whole sprint for innovation and planning. So while that's not happening, we could do one of these. We could ask for, or as agile leaders, we could you know very strongly you know focus on having events like hackathons. Hackathons are really really fun events. Right, or we could have things like innovation days, where we say, in, in either cases, we either try to come up with, you know, identify top three or four business problems that we're facing today, and if we go the regular, you know, project way, we won't be able to get solutions. So those three or four organizational challenges will be put up on the challenge board, and the teams will be encouraged to come up with, you know, really cool 
you know innovative ideas you know uh, you know of products or features or software that could help us solve those business problems that we're not able to you know solve during our regular day to day you know project you know uh, project grind so you could either do a hackathon kind of event it, like amazon does a lot of these you know a lot of product companies do hackathons salesforce does this innovation days you know you'll be very surprised you know there's a lot of organizations who said that we won't we wouldn't have gotten you know these many business ideas that can be productized if we did not have an innovation day and why do people you know participate so enthusiastically in hackathons and innovation days they don't necessarily do this for money do they right they do this because they want a sense of recognition they want to you know they want basically a, a, a sense of purpose to achieve you know greater business results you know they want to show showcase that they have mastery over a certain area and so you know and innovation by the way you know this this is just one example this, these are just some ways in which we can you know introduce you know or take or carve out time for innovation you know in our agile projects as well so as it is the agile methods have innovation in process innovation and opportunities for getting feedback um, how, and in addition to that if there are other things that we can do other how else can we you know inculcate this innovative culture it's through uh, hackathons and innovation days and, and things as such right now that's uh, basically all that I had so I'll quickly sum up what I was you know uh, trying to cover in this presentation really quick and then you know we will carve out some time for Q&A uh, towards the end and I would like to give you know I'll, I'd like to give you an opportunity to ask questions and interact that way we'll all learn from each other right so where we started was we said that you know to, in today's world uh, you know innovation and the, we basically tried to uh, basically connect innovation and the agile manifesto we said you know it's not new the whole process of agile the whole agile methods have you know have harbored have innovation as a culture built into them uh, organizations that embrace and manage changing requirements are the only ones that basically stay ahead of the game that actually live sustain and basically you know stay ahead of their competition now we also spoke about how do how can we do continuous improvement and how that is built into agile you know we spoke about innovation and agility the message to take away from this is to say that you will only innovate you can only innovate if you don't settle for status quo so that's the message that we were trying to convey from this slide and you know we you know we spoke about this slide where we said you know how do we embrace and manage changing requirements uh, we basically spoke about this and we said if we continue to be a status quo manager uh, then I think you know things are not going to move and I think we will very soon be replaced by either other managers or will be completely replaced by automation so one of those is, is likely to happen if you don't have an innovative mind through which you can push uh, you, you know better quality um, you know uh, ideas or better uh, improve employee morale uh, if you you can only be if you are embracing and managing changing requirements you can own you can an entrepreneur will be delighted because they'll go to the market faster uh, and the innovation teams are trying to figure out the best methods and uh, techniques for innovation. Um, you know, truth be told, there's a number of companies that have adopted agile and scaled agile methods uh, that I spoke about, like you know, Amazon, you know, Salesforce, Cisco, Amdocs, you know, Intel, Philips, UHG. Those companies have said that we found these amazing business results by adopting agile methods of doing software development right so they they innovated and they basically adopt embraced and adopted agile methods and these are the business results amazing business results like you know you have much greater productivity up to 50 percent greater productivity up to 75 percent faster releases out of the market uh, up to 50 percent you know defect reduction and happier employees because you know 
whatever you do is hitting the market so frequently, why would somebody not be charged up, right? So we spoke about the Agile Manifesto itself, you know, calling out about 15, 16 years ago, the need to be responding to change, which is what, you know, Netflix and the Amazons and Salesforce of the world are doing today, and the CA technologies are doing today. Uh, which is responding to change rather than following the conventional waterfall or you know conventional methods. Uh, we have to welcome changing require change in requirements. That's how you you know work for the better betterment of the customer and hence better business results. Um, and you know that's how we innovate and we stay ahead of the game. Inspect and adapt from time to time so that you know you can tune and adjust uh, you know to delivering what the business wants. These are other facets that we looked at, a requirements, definition, planning approach, scope control, project management approach, etc. We also tried to identify and point out areas in the agile you know, software development process where there are feedback loops and opportunities for you to inspect and adapt, which is nothing but be agile and embrace change so that you can harbor this kind of culture of innovation. Innovation which is nothing but, you know, your ability to adapt changes quickly, right? Adapt to changing environment. We also saw how backlog, backlogs are managed to constantly, you know, provide best business results. A product owner keeps making changes to the product backlog to, to provide the best business results, you know, uh, at real time. And uh, mostly, you know, most changes will be embraced at every sprint boundary by the development teams. Now, while those are methods and, you know, opportunities for us to, you know, make changes to our, you know, um, basically embrace changes and be dynamic, um, like, like all the leading companies today, like Spotify or what have you. Now, while the agile, agile process itself has those opportunities, what else can we do to harbor a culture of innovation? We, in, in Agile projects, we can have either time set out for innovation, which is either to have a day or two days or three days set out for doing innovation and planning. Innovation basically is to do events like hackathons, shippy days, you know, um, innovation days, what have you, companies like Atlassian, uh, you know, which is, uh, which is, the company, which is parent uh, company of Jira, um, Jira is one of the product. You know, companies like Amazon does hackathons every now and then. You know, and all the bright ideas that Salesforce gives a lot of credit to all of their innovation days uh, for giving rise to a lot of either bug fixes or new product ideas. So they come out of these. So that those may be ideas that you could, as agile leaders, also uh, take back to your companies for uh, creating a culture of innovation and, uh, you know, um, and, and agility, right? So that's, that's pretty much what I had uh, to share in this uh, you know, session as a recap. So I'll, uh, you know, I'd firstly like to thank all of you for taking the time out and uh, basically listening into the webinar. Um, and I know, you know, a number of you may be very enthusiastically waiting for your questions to be answered. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to open it up for any Q&A uh, that any of you may have, right? All right, so guys, are there, any, do you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, or feedback? Please type that in. Uh, you know, you can type that in using the, you know, uh, the chat window, and I'll be able to see them real time. And I'll be extremely happy to answer any questions that you may have. Anybody got any questions, comments, suggestions? Let me see if the chat feature is working fine. So I don't, you know, so Satya, if you're still on, I don't see any more, any questions that have come up from our participants. Uh, you know, do you see any questions coming up that, that I can help answer? All right, fantastic, okay, so I'll give it another minute to see if there's somebody who, who pops up with a question. If not, then, you know, I will, you know, I would greatly like to thank all of you for your time 
and uh, you know for for your interest in uh, basically joining us for the webinar today uh, and I wish you nothing but good luck in your uh, you know jo agile journey okay thank you have a good day or night depending on where you are